All right, so we're, we're holding our Satyathia here with Pactor Boostersol, Bonsai Applications at Finish. So we're talking, you know, you're getting to the fish lip stage at first sign of pollen, and that's when we want to apply. So we're gonna uh, apply as a spray um, or a drench, depending on how what you're kind of um, set up to do at this point in the, uh, the point of the year. Um, but you know, it's a very specific window of when this will be uh, uh, effective, right? Yeah, you want to catch it. Um, ideally, you know, it, it, just put it this way: you're gluing that uh, flower. The scythe, you're gluing it to the plant, you're also gluing it in place so no more flower development will occur. No more bract expansion will occur. So you want to do it when the plant is ready to sell before pollen. Once pollen starts to shed aggressively, that the fate of that particular flower is set. And the abscission obsess will happen regardless of the bonsai application. So it's important to catch it at lips before, when the lips appear, the yellow part of the flower and between lips and pollen, but know that nothing else will progress after that. So it's a good point that nothing will progress afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. so we have these strategies and every year is a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. So we might not be able to apply what we want to every year, depending on what we're seeing on the actual BRAC development, yep. right? We're not getting, we don't have an, uh, we weren't paying attention to our ADTs early. So we're having a little bit late where our BRAC development color isn't fully there, but our Sayathia is starting to shed pollen. Don't do it. You because got it. The color is more important on the BRAC than your Sayathia even being retained in the center. As a part, I hate to break to you, too, but we are plant nerds. Okay. Yeah. Even a, a basic grower is in compared to our consumer an extreme plant nerd. Most people, yeah. most of our consumers have no idea what we're talking about when we talk about Sciathia, but they that's will amazing. recognize if that bract is not fully colored. Yeah, that's an excellent point when you talk about any, any of these other variables that will affect your bract development. Um, you will get in situations like with um, um, heat delay and light delay, you will see uh, the flower advance further than the bract. And so when you're sitting there with your bracts aren't expanded, don't use this technique. Excellent point, James. The, the, the bract comes first. We're selling bracts, not scythia. Scythias are a nice bonus and we don't want them to fall out because that looks ratty, but we're right. selling bracts. Just and, to and go back, both, no, go ahead, James. Both of these pictures, I would say that they're good examples on different varieties of when we can apply yep. uh, the bonsai, right? Yep. And, and there's just, you know, first sign of pollen, the bottom one is a little less progressed. So we were a little bit more on top of it, but yes, you know, there are good examples of when we should apply this strategy. And like all widespread strategies or changes, you only have one time a year, try this out first before we do it widespread. Yep. I want to go back to when we're talking about PGR drenches. The one thing I didn't talk about, I said volume was critical, but I didn't give you any ideas what kind of volume to use. So the, 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 the rules are vague. There are no rules. So what we've tried to do is create sort of a verbal guideline so that you have something that's consistent that you can educate your irrigators or the people that will be applying the drench to. And these rates, when we talk about the rates between a, a 20th and an eighth of a part per million, that's predicated on this assumption. And that assumption is one fluid ounce per inch diameter of the pot. So six fluid ounces on a six inch pot, 10 ounces on a 10 inch pot. Now that is not a rule. That's simply a way that if you have a language of consistency, when you do these applications, you will, you will, know how much efficacy you're going to have. If you don't have control over the volume, it, the, the response will be very different. So you can create your own set of rules, but just understand the rates that we're talking about, this 20th apart on the, on the very low end up to an eighth of a part on the high end. This is all predicated and built around this premise of one fluid ounce per inch diameter of the pot. Now, the other thing you can throw in there when you start getting into bigger pots with bigger plants, and you have multiple stems in there, 
you start thinking about in those terms, well, how much actual plant am I controlling? So at that point, you would consider increasing your volume. So like a 10 inch four stem pot, you might go up to maybe like 16 ounces in that particular situation. But the bottom line is whatever you do, make that rule and apply that rule and don't waiver that rule. Don't make volume be a variable. The variable be frequency of application and rate, but make your volume language to your growing staff consistent. So every time you do the drench, you're doing the same volume. And year to year, make sure that these rules within your uh, organization and, and sort of flux we have with growing staff are not lost, yeah. right? We make rules so we can compare rates from year to year on variety to variety. But if we change the volume rule, for example, of how we like to operate within our operation year to year, then the rates become um, less useful for us to compare. We're, we're starting to compare apples to oranges and not apples to apples in a year to year span. I think that's, yeah, that, that's just, uh, again, you talk talking about these sort of general grower principles is variables are what we try to learn and understand and manage. Constants are things that we can do that are part of the environment, part of our greenhouse structure, you know, things that, that are fixed. So the more variables we have to juggle, uh, the harder it is to, to, to identify exactly what variable is affecting what. So don't let the volume be a variable, make that a constant and let the, let the, the you know, the, the frequency and application be the variable. But I think that that principle applies to everything we do in horticulture. You want to try to make as many constants as you can. The art of compromise, Dave Kransky, favorite term that he used years ago, growing is the art of compromise. You have ideals. I can tell you, Dave will tell you, says, look, I can tell you exactly how to grow this species to the nth degree from the lab. But you are growing it next to 35 other species in the greenhouse. You need to figure out how to make that environment work for everything. The art of compromise. So. What are the constants? Your water's, water is constant, your environment's a constant, your media's a constant, maybe your feed regime's a constant. I don't know, but make constants and then juggle your variables.